for part three of task one, we want to use Excel in order to compute basic descriptive statistics. So we're going to use the built-in formulas and cell references, and we're going to find and label everything in a clear manner. So notice that you have to use Excel to do this. Calculator answers will receive no credit. You must use Excel. All right, so we're going to find the mean, the median, the count, which is how many of them there are, and then the variance, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, and so on. All right, so let's go back into our data set right here. Now I want a way to do all this in such a way that my instructor can follow along because your instructor is going to have to open up this spreadsheet and know where everything is. So it's up to you where you want to put it, you know, put it wherever makes you happy, but you want to kind of label it. So I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to say part two or part three, descriptive statistics, right there. Make sure that's what it was told. Oh, GDP statistics. Well, that's fine too. Okay, now you might notice that there is a bit of an issue with the fact that it's making the, um, well, first of all, it's a really small font. So, if, but if I make it a larger size font so we can read it, then it starts messing around with the row height over here. Now, there's a couple ways you can get around that. Um, one of the ways is to not wrap the text. So if you see up here where it says wrap text in the, helm, in the home menu, if you click on it again, it doesn't wrap it. It lets it bleed over into a further column. So if I clicked on this cell and I typed something, though, then I can't see it anymore. But as long as you make sure that when you're typing, you're making sure to leave space, then that should be fine. The other option is to merge and center these two cells. So if I click on merge and center, then it's turned it into one cell. That's a little bit safer because I literally can't type on cell E2 anymore. D2 and E2 have been merged together and they form one group. All right, so now I can label these. So I want the mean, the median, and so on. I'm going to go type up all of these, but I'm going to make them size 12 font and bold, for example. You don't have to make them bold. You can color them however you so desire, but you're, I'm going to type in each of the values that I'm interested in. So let me go grab all of them and I'll be right back. All right, when I typed in these values, I can see that I'm still having this problem occasionally with, say, things like standard deviation or class width being such a long word phrase that it's not working out so well for me. So another thing I can do to kind of say, solve my problems is click on the column, the line between columns D and E, and just drag it over so that it's a wider column. That way I can accommodate these longer phrases. And then if I highlight the rows that I just changed and make it so that my arrow is a double-sided arrow between two numbers and double click, then it'll make them all nice and narrow. Everything looks neat again. So that works as well. Okay, so now I need to go find the mean for these data. Now, this is where the fun part begins because you don't have to type in data into a calculator. All you have to do is type a formula. So the the unfortunate name for the mean in Excel is the word average, which we all know from class is not really appropriate because there's actually several averages. Average is just a fancy word for center. And so um, they shouldn't use the word average, but that's what they did when they programmed the program. So what are we going to do? So it, it says equals average. And so what I'm doing is I'm telling it what to take the average of. I'm saying B2 colon B97. Let me press enter. And again, I don't like how small the font is here, so I'm going to make everything 12 point font so it's nice and good sized. Now, what's interesting here to note is that I'm using cell references. Cell references are really great. It allows Excel to calculate things based off of where do you want me to start? And I told it to start at B2, which is this Malawi year 98.6348. That's where it's starting. And it's ending at B97, which is Bermuda's value, way down at the bottom. Let me show you. Right there. Bermuda. B97. So column B, row 97, they intersect at B97. That's using cell references to make Excel work for you. And it's awesome. 
All right, now for median, I'm typing equals median is the formula, simple as that. Now I know it's B2 to B97 for me. And of course, keep in mind that it'll be B2 for you, colon, but every one of you is going to have a different number for your bottom number because you're not using 1960. So I'm using B2 colon B97. And I can get that by highlighting it again with my mouse, but I can also just type it. I know what it is because I just did it. It's B2 colon B97 or whatever it is for you for your year. And for the record, let me just show you. We can see that this value is 962, right? So let me show you what it would be if I went past B97, which was Bermuda, and went to 150. 150 is way down here, all these empty values. I'm including all that emptiness. And look what happens to the formula. I told it to be 150, but it didn't matter. The number was still 962. Let me prove it to you. If I go back to 97, still 1962. That's what I meant why when I said it doesn't matter whether you bother to leave the countries there or not, Excel knows to ignore them, and you should too. All right, now count. Well, that would be equal to count. That's the formula for it. It's just finding how large was this data set in terms of how many data entries were there. So again, I tell it B2 colon B97 for me, or B 120 for you or whatever. And for me, it's 96. All right, now I have variance and standard deviation. So it says in the instructions to treat these data as if they are a population. So we will do so. We are going to treat them as if they're a population. So we're going to type equals VAR now here's where it gets fun. So there are actually several variance formulas. In particular, we're interested in var.p and var.s. So if I type var.p parentheses, it's saying treat this data set like it's a population and find the variance. So then I have to just tell it where to start, which is B2, and where to stop, which for me is B97. And there we go. I have the variance. Now keep in mind that we know what the units for these are. So the units would be, in case you're interested, dollars, dollars, do and this is just a count. There's no unit on that. It's just how many of them there are. This is dollars squared, believe it or not. That's the way variance works. Standard deviation, the formula is equal stdev dot p, parentheses, and then again tell it b2 colon b97 or whatever um, cell reference you need to end it, and that has a unit of dollars again. Now the minimum is rather obvious because it's right here, <laughs> but you can actually find it without having sorted our data set, so I'm going to do that with a formula. So equals min b2 colon b97, and there we have it. It's Malawi's value, and so when it asks you what country, That'll be different from year to year, but for me, the country was Malawi. Now, what about the max? Well, I don't feel like scrolling down again. So I'm going to type equals max, parentheses, and then again, give it the, the cell reference. And there you go. Now, be careful. Make sure you have your highest cell reference in there. If you're worried about it, just put in like 200. It won't make any difference. It'll still find the highest value. Now, as to which country that is, well, you'd have to go scrolling down and look for it. As I recall, it's Bermuda in my particular data set. All right, now for the range. I'm going to find this with, with the formula. So I'm going to type equals max parentheses of my data set and close that parentheses minus the min and then parentheses and then give it the cell references as well. And I find that it's 195847. Now, for the record, I could have found it a different way as well. So let me show you. I'm going to do it right over here. Equals, well, I found the max in this cell right here, which for me is E10. It might be in a different cell reference for you, depending on how you adjusted your table. Minus, and I found the min right here, which for me was in cell E8. And that's another way I could have found the same number. 
right? I could have found it that way without having to do max and min for the whole data spreadsheet. Either way, I would have found it's 19,000. So whichever way you want to do it, do one of those two methods, but you have to find it with cell references. You can't just type it. So you have to find it either by taking the two values you already found here and subtracting them, or by using the full-fledged formula. Now the class width is what happens when you take your range and you divide it by how many classes you want. So we are interested in 20 classes, so I'm going to divide by 20. And I did that by, here let me type that again, equals, I clicked on the cell for the range, which for me was in cell E12. Keep in mind that if you've adjusted your table or it's in a different column, you'll have to adjust it to match your values. And then I'm going to divide it by 20. So I press the division sign and then I press divide by 20, enter. And then I get 974.498. All right, so let me go back to the project real quick. So I've got my class width, what it should be. But then I realize that that's kind of ugly and I'm going to round. I'm going to round it to the nearest hundred. Now when I do this, it might mean that I end up with actually not 20 classes, but that's okay. 20 was my goal, but if I end up with less than 20 or more than 20, then so be it. So I'm going to actually round this value to the nearest hundred. Okay, well the nearest hundred would be to round it to a thousand, right? That's one thing that you, well actually I can show you how to do that as well. Equals round, round is a command, and when I type it, I can click on that cell and say I want one digit. And that'll round it to the one decimal place. Well, that's too much. So what if I said negative one digit? Eh, that'll round it to 970. What if I said negative two digits? That would round it to 1,000. Now keep in mind, if for you, your class width is much larger. Let's say it's, let me just give you an example. Let's suppose you have a class width of 3,524 for example. Then if you wanted to round that, you could say round and then click on that cell and then comma negative two wouldn't cut it. Actually negative two would, sorry. That'll get you the nearest hundred, which is 3,500. So in this case it rounded it down, but in this case it rounded it up. So different um, class widths for part nine will mean different numbers for class 10, but the round feature equals round will actually round it for you. The negative two means you're going to go two decimal places to the left. So you're going to go to the hundreds place, get it? Just so you can see how this works, if I had left positive two in there, it would have gone to the tenths place right there. Right? It's technically the hundreds place, but the problem is that the eight rounds the nine up, so it's really 974.50. Right? So it did round to the hundredths, but we couldn't see it. Let me give you this one. So if I rounded this to 0.017 or 158, just there. So if I say round that to two decimal places, there it goes. It rounds it to the hundredths place. So that's how the round feature works. So I'm going to delete all this old stuff because I don't need this. That was just to show you. So I'm going to take this value, I'm going to round it to negative two decimal places. That takes it to the hundredths place. And there we have it. It's rounded for me. Let's go back to the project. I believe we have done all of part three. We have found all those values and we've used Excel and cell references for every piece of it.